Snowball Spa. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Thursday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports, right here on 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Jared is back. So we might rehash a little bit of the college basketball talk that we had yesterday with Oklahoma winning on Tuesday night. Does Jared think they are a lock to make the tournament? How will the Big 12 teams fare? Are, it, it seems like a lot of the Big 12 games are just ugly rock fights. But does that change when they get away from each other? You get into the NCAA tournament, will will the quality shine through, or is it just kind of a bunch of decent teams that are all kind of matched up the same? So we'll ask him that at the end of the show. NBA stuff, Thunder go 2-2 two and two on the West Coast swing as they knock off Portland last night. Scary moment with Bismack Biombo on the sideline. Did the Thunder did did the Western Conference open up just a tick with uh, Carl Anthony Towns torn meniscus? How does that put where where does that put Minnesota? League wide, is it just the Celtics title to win? Man, you start looking at what they've done this year. They are one of the better teams analytically that we've ever seen. But we've also seen with this group especially struggles in the playoffs. So is it the Celtics title to lose? And then we're kind of three quarters of the way through the season, about twenty games left left for most teams. Who you got in the conference finals, the finals, MVP, and of course the one award that a lot of people MVP obviously, and then Rookie of the Year. People over people in Oklahoma will be paying attention to with that two man race there. And then of course we'll recap what happened at the Big House yesterday, Class Two A state tournaments. With the Oilerettes of Merritt moving on to the semifinals. The Oilers fought extremely hard last night against Tennessee. Just couldn't get it done, but the Oilers' season ends in the quarterfinal loss. Still a great uh, great first year for those guys and, and Coach Husband. I want Jared to tell us, he got to see Dale, really both. Did you did you get to see much of the girls? It was right after, right? The Dale girls right after the Merritt Oilers. I ran and grabbed lunch. Okay. I met up with the buddy. Well, everybody wants lunch. to know about Riverside anyway. You got to see Riverside before the Oilerettes. So we'll talk about that. How good, was the, how good are the Dale boys? Then you got 4A today. Quarterfinals, the last quarterfinal day in the big house. Western Conference teams all over the bracket that we'll tell you about as well. And one other thing. I started looking at kind of semifinals from last week, then, of course, this week, what's going on. I know we we discuss ad nauseum with the coaches, with us, you know, the system that is in place to rank teams and, and how that determines playoffs. I'm going to tell you something. We will start, you know, we'll, we'll criticize it and, and gal, your buddy system, da 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 da. In 2A, they got it exactly right. Because one, two, three, and four yeah, are in the semis on both sides. That's true. Boys and, I mean, and looking down through the rest of the classes, they've done a pretty good job throughout the entirety as well. 225 9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225 9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things or whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, a couple of ways to stay in touch with the show. One of those is to log on to kadsam.com or download the app. The app is free. The Paragon Communications app has everything. Radio, Penny News. So pick, up a, pick up a copy of the Penny News. is out right now all over the place. And then, of course, Big Elk and Paragon TV. You can listen uh, to the Oilerettes try to uh, hoist a state title a gold ball on paragon tv cool 94 for radio there as well at 1 30 tomorrow hello jared how are you wonderful i know all of our listeners are glad to have the podcast back because you're here and i forget every single time <laughs> to hit record so you that'd know, be good sometimes i had to put a little note right on my screen here it says record to remind me here's what's Maybe wild I need to get one right there for i you. even remembered as the first segment was going, yeah. I mentioned it on the air. Ah, first segment's going to be not on today's podcast, but the rest of it will. And then by the time I got done flapping my yap for yeah. the first segment, I'd I'd forgotten again. 
to go run around there and hit the record button. Uh, ri- That's right. r- ridiculous. Okay, so you were inside the big house uh, yeah. yesterday for both Merritt games. You also saw uh, Riverside before Merritt mm-hmm. uh, in on the girls' side. Let's talk Oilerettes first. Man, I thought they jumped out to a lead, and it grew at times. It shrunk at times, but it was 14-7 at the end of the first quarter, and they end up winning by eight. Just kind of... They really just kind of held Pecola at yeah. arm's length. I think at one point maybe they got it down to, what, five below that seven. I mean, it really just kind of stayed from – Yeah, Pecola put – they, they turned it on the fourth quarter. You could but they were feel, down like 18 when right, they started. Yeah, you could feel the sense of urgency. And But they got a good player in Alyssa Parker, Pecola does. And I think even though she finished with 16 points, the big, the ch- big chunk of that came in the first half. And that's where Merritt. They, yeah, I think she had ten to, at halftime, right? Yeah, they were able to kind of really bottle her up in the third quarter, and that's the quarter that won it. They they outscored them twenty three to eleven, and and so keeping her at bay long enough for Merritt to do what they've done all season long, and and uh, pull away and hold on to get that win, and the stuff they've done all season long is that's play uh, really good defense and shoot the ball well, especially from outside. They were they hit eight. Uh, three pointers. Five of them came from the hands of Chloe Stout. Finished with 15 points. She was fantastic shooting. I've seen it before with my own eyes, and I was starting to see it again, thinking, "Wow, she uh, that was not a fluke." The first time I saw it, she could absolutely uh, fill it up. Uh, and also, Addison Hartman finished with a game high 20 points, seven rebounds. She was a uh, a worker yesterday, and 10 points put in by Marley Mung. Great defense, I think. Uh, I mentioned the defense. Ella Porter had that task of kind of clogging up the lane and being real tough and and uh, that's gonna have to oh and one more stat I wanted to mention um they went they got to the free throw line mm-hmm. uh Merritt did they hit 12 of 14 are you listening kids they hit 12 of 14 free throws Pacola hit four of six they I mean it's not it, it's boring the practice the free throws but in a game like that some would say that's probably what helped them pull away and win uh, a state tournament game was making their free, getting to the free throw line and making their free throws. 85%, pretty good uh, for Coach Doherty's team right there. So now they get the big task of taking on number two, Riverside. I'll, yeah, you mentioned it. I was able to see Riverside. They are uh, well rounded. Um, they got size. They have athletes that can uh, get inside uh, without using that size or uh, hitting the three from outside. I'm just absolutely. Uh, was uh, devastating against Van Oss yesterday, beating them 72-33. to 33. And then it just kind of, you know, we saw it. It reminded me of when Hammond played Leedy in that first-round game last year where it just got out of hand and the bench was cleared and they kept it going. Right. You know, they kept hitting the shots. And, the, and that, you know, it just, uh, it, you know, it's it's a – contagious is is you know, the the crowd feeds off of it and, and it kept going on. So – yeah, they beat them seventy-two to thirty-three. But let's, in all fairness, to Riverside, they did pull off the dogs early, early enough, like you would expect. But those those other players kept hitting their shots. But they are really, really good. So Merritt's going to have their hands full. They're going to have to play tough. That's that's the one thing that I think is a key. Is just be uh, tough and physical as Riverside's going to be to them. And Merritt's not going to back down from that. Seen them enough this year. They are a f- uh, tough, physical team. And uh, uh, can um, um, if if they can hit the three like they did yesterday, I know they, they took twenty sh- shots from outside, but they hit them when they needed to hit them, and that that kind of created that gap and and created that momentum for them, especially Stout. So if they can match the shooting that Riverside is going to bring, and um, and and match the physicality, we're going to have ourselves a knockdown dragout fight. It's going to be a fun game gonna be a fun game i can't pick a winner i don't know i it's it just they just seem so so evenly matched with that kind of like the style that they play with that i call it physical finesse type style and it's gonna be it's gonna be a fight it's gonna be a fun fun game tomorrow 130 <clears throat> yeah i mean i just riverside's results don't match what i saw with my own eyes they probably do for you because they knock down a bunch of shots and, mm-hmm. and you know like i keep harping on that when people ask me i mean when i saw them I wasn't. Yeah, they didn't just jump out to me as like, oh my gosh, this is a two A state champ now. But like I said, one game, 
who knows? It just had a bad shooting night. You know, you knock in three or four open threes, and all of a sudden, that's a, the, the game against Elk City is way out of hand instead of just a 12 point win in which the Elkettes won the second half. And so that was the one thing, you know, that you see that ceiling result, and it just that it has to pop your eyes out of your head with knowing what ceiling has been for all these years and then seeing the domination that Rivers, Riverside put on ceiling. You're like, whoa. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's a, it's a different animal. I think it's it's a totally interesting matchup because I think Merritt is able to handle what Riverside's good at. Is that if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, th- I think they're equipped to handle that. I, I would love to know, and, and you know, we have to ask Co- Coach Doherty this, and, and maybe some of the girls. But you mentioned Parker and her size and her skill. I wonder how much the last couple of years of Merritt being able to go against and, and figure out a plan to defend Henley West in the regular season for yeah. Hammond helped with being comfortable in doing what they were doing, it sounded like, right. just on, on the air to to uh, to Parker of Pecola. That That's a great, great point. It makes probably, you know, after having the task of, of, of uh, shutting down, not shutting down, but guarding Henley West – what they do, it's like six times the last two years, it's what, been five a bunch times, of games, something yeah. like that, mm-hmm. with a lot of success. That makes other not as tall opponents <laughs> like, well, <laughs> this is nothing. I've guarded Henley West. Uh, I can guard her. But they would, as soon as Parker would touch the ball, they'd almost triple team her. I mean, they just collapse down on her and make it incredibly tough for her. It was, it was a good defensive plan on her because, and he said it in the pregame, Coach Doherty did, he said, we're not going to let double zero beat us. Mm-hmm. It's, it's someone else is going to have to beat us. She's going to have to work. So they made her work, and man, she worked for 16 points. It just wasn't enough. I mean, uh, another young lady, Letty Parga, had 12. That was that was only one, only other uh, Pecola player scoring in double digits. So you're going to need more production in state tournament games against the top teams in Class 2A to have success. You can't just rely on one or two players. It's it's going to have to be, you know. And I mentioned. Uh, the production from Merritt with with Stout and and Hartman and Mung and not to take away from the others they they played their roles and played them well but you you need that more well rounded offensive product in my opinion offensive production mm-hmm. and you know not everyone's going to have a Forsyth on their team that can That's just right. take over so yeah, and Carnes had nine uh, chipping in. I mean they, yeah, they, yeah, they, they were really balanced was, yeah Karn, yeah almost exactly. four in double figures yeah. that's uh, that's really good yep. yeah, yeah one anomaly from that the Riverside ceiling game ceiling O of twenty five from three. That is odd. So, I mean, I mean, something's off. I mean, you're not hitting one three pointer. That's oh, crazy. Of 20, oh, out of 25. 25 attempts. I mean, you think percentagely you're going to get two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one the that coin has to drop on heads eventually. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. But it, but that makes sense as to when you see that result that doesn't make sense in my mind. Well, there you go. You got a team that yeah, you like. Just a, an off shooting night for ceiling would be six of twenty five. Yeah. Well, you put eighteen in, and all of a sudden that's a lot, a lot different game, and that's with not shooting very. That's shooting barely twenty five percent from three. Yeah. You get up there where you're normally probably in that thirty three ish. Yeah. Now all of a sudden it's a tight one. Uh, so and that's a I, trivia I, question. When's the last time ceiling oh, girls have? Not I forgot hit about my trivia question. Three pointer. Okay. Yeah. I forgot about my trivia question. It seems weird that you're getting this from Jimmy Clark from the No, no, no. Show. I gave it to Jimmy Clark, oh, and then he fired it out okay. there for for uh, some tickets. I got you. I got you. And by the way, one of our guys, uh, happy birthday, Double D, Diamond Dave. You hear his son Corbin on the air here on the Barber Dyson oh, spots. Oh, yeah, yeah. Double, double D. I will not divulge <laughs> that information. I will say one shy of a milestone. Oh, How about oh, that? Oh, okay. Uh, happy birthday to David Dyson. Oh, here's the trivia question okay, before yes. we continue down the 2A state tournament road. So I was reading yesterday. By the way, Jared, you know what a month? You know what happens a month from now? No, no. Uh, oh, yo, oh. Is it OABs? <laughs> no. Is that not? That will be, that's on the Thursday. That's the is it, fourth. Is it um, um, Masters? A month from now. Yeah. The Calcmobile will be headed east to begin the journey to Augusta National. 
So when are you leaving? That, the, like a the month 11th? from th- no, the seventeenth or the seventh, a month from today. I'm so I'm, gotta get to yeah, this coffee's not working <laughs> today. It was one a.m. when my head hit so, the pillow. I'm a little tired. So yesterday I was kind of okay. reading. Well, here's the deal. A tweet popped up and it said, "I'm taking my dad to the Masters. First time ever I've been. What are some things you have to do?" And yeah. so I started reading the comments to get a feel. Asked my buddy that's been there before that we're going with, and then so I started reading about the the merch tent. And when I say tent, I think it's a however many thousands yeah. and thousands of square foot building. A tent that looks like a mall, probably. It's going to be and more like so, a strip mall, yeah. So the uh, as I read and you know some different stories about people spending ungodly amounts of money. Oh yeah. I came across this figure, and this figure is: How many dollars do you think get spent inside the Masters merchandise building? Per hour. Per hour? Per hour. Okay. How many dollars? Think, okay, so if it was me, and it's my first trip there, like it's going to be yours, and I'm probably thinking I'm buying for multiple people. Mm-hmm. I have a fistful of dollars here. Who? Uh, let's see. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Oh, my goodness. I wonder how many people per hour. I have no idea. Um. I will go. We've got some guesses. I will go around. I like Broadbent's answer there. I I would say about. Let's go lower than that. Let's go about thirty five thousand. Not even on the planet. So, really? Yeah, like we, higher? Oh yeah. Dakota overshot. Just Dakota overshot. We've had fifteen grand. No. Fifty grand. No. Three hundred. Three hundred k. No. Oh my goodness. One point no. five million is a little too high. Per hour, so three three hundred fifty million is a no. Is no, no, higher? no. Three hundred k. Oh, three hundred. I'm sorry. Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. Why did is I say too million? Low. Good yeah. lord, my mind has just been. One point five million cost. too high. We got another guess of one million. That's awfully close. It's going to be eight hundred. Fifty thousand. Got it. Dead really? on the head. Really? Eight, did you look it up? No, did you Google? No, I, you can look. I'll <laughs> lift up the screen. Eight hundred and fifty k an hour. Insane. And so if you if you multiply that by ten hours by seven days, that thing rolls through about sixty million dollars worth of merchandise. Wow! Wow! I'd like to know the number of people on average per hour that they that is swiping a card. You know what I mean? Yeah. How many people? And so my 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 question is. How much are they spending? My guess would be, if you average it, probably a hundred people. I'm I'm gonna say you spend. I mean a thousand people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A thousand people. Yeah. Because I'm gonna say you spend about somewhere between five hundred and a thousand dollars on average. Probably. Now there, there's gonna be people that spend way more than that. There's gonna be people that just go buy a hat. You know, because not everybody's there for the first time. Yeah, I know. I was trying to equate that in my mind too, right. and I was, but I was thinking like in terms of. But it almost kind of offsets, right? There's some people that aren't there for the first time, but they want to get their commemorative pen or something that has the year on it. And then there's people like you, first timer, and you probably have a Christmas list of stuff you're getting for people. So I think it kind of offsets it every year. The record, the record that they can remember spent is thirty six thousand by one person. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. Do they have shopping carts in there? My goodness. Well, no, here's the cool thing. They'll just ship it home for you. You just give them an address and they'll Yeah. I'm sure you spend a certain amount of money, they'll they'll make some they'll they'll help you out there. Uh, I think yeah, I, th- I think you just you you buy it, they ship it home. That way you're not having to carry it around. Yeah, Mark is exactly right. You get you a chair and you go put it somewhere. And nobody touches it. People might sit in it, but if you come back that's your chair. There's a respect there. There's That's a, correct. There's a, yeah. It's absolutely correct. I do they put their prices online? No. Of their merch, Good. like well, no, no, not them. But I like does anybody does like there was, say hey? I read an article about spending, like how to spend that thirty six thousand dollars. Oh yeah. And it was from like twenty twenty two, or twenty twenty three, maybe in last year. And what they did was they, you had you had you were limited to five items, five of the same item. Okay. So you couldn't just buy 500 polos, right, gotcha. to spend that money. And there was price tags beside each thing in that article just to 
to get to where it got to. Not outrageous. Now you go online, yeah, and try to find I, some of this yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely outrageous. It's insane. I've seen it, but that's the cool thing about the masters, like the food, right? It's been the same price for so long. Yeah, the sandwiches and all that. You you see that somebody will post that a picture of that menu every single year, and it's it's insane. You think about going to Southern Hills. <laughs> oh, it was like nineteen dollars a beer. Yes. The masters, it's five. Yeah, yeah. Mark's right. You can leave your stuff and come back and get it. I think you'll leave, like if you're if you like drive there and park they'll let you take it out put it in your car and then come back i think you can re-enter once on your on your ticket okay yeah that'd for that be purpose a thing. like do you yeah. want to carry that stuff around all heck day? no wow. cool so, anyway yeah 850 an hour <laughs> Insane. Well, the reason I ask, I need, just need to know how much money I need to get. <laughs> That's why I need to. <laughs> what, it I've had on, it in my mind. What are you, what are you looking for? Well, I've, I was, I've been very vocal about a hat, just the, the classic hat, the classic green It's probably a $30 hat. purchase, probably, something like that. Probably. It did, they I'm actually didn't about, have. Give me a couple bills. Give me a couple bills. They didn't have. Here, and here's the problem. You've got to decide before I go in there. Sure. Because. You're right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, you know. Yeah, you can't go texting people and be like, "Hey, what do you want? Hey, I'm, what do you want?" Well, I might say like, give you like give you pictures of. You can't do that. No, I'll give you a certain amount of money. Uh, you know, I want the hat. I might say, "Grab me a polo." I'll let you be the best. You want a green on polo? This one. You want? I'll let yeah. you be the best judgment on style. You you have a good sense of style on polos, and I'll give you my size, and I'll say whatever's left over. Uh, keep the change as a surcharge or a as a tax or whatever. Not for your trouble. For your trouble. <laughs> well, then you'll get the cheapest. and <laughs> Got a month there to figure. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the. They have these gnomes. God. <laughs> but they go away on Monday. Like, I guess it's kind of this thing. Like, like lawn gnomes? Like lawn gnomes. 13-inch lawn gnomes. But I guess they Is become like this cult thing to where by the time Monday's over. They're gone? They're gone. Like, Are the, they collectible? Like, each, each one has a year on them? I don't know. I don't know, and I, I want to know. Mark's been there. I wonder if he he can tell us this. Like you, you see the flags. So last year, for the first time ever, I didn't know this until watching the par three last year, the coverage, and then they they talked about you know you, you always see the kids and mm-hmm. you know yeah. uh, you know when they exit number nine and they got the flat the master that iconic yellow flag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you start noticing they won't. They'll sign the outside. Well, if it's got a year on it, if it's got a year on the flag, then you can sign inside the the logo because it's your year to win. Okay. But if it doesn't have a year, you have to. You can't. If it doesn't, it's not your year. You can't do it that way. Wow. That's amongst the player. That's just a player's the thing player's that they've come thing. up. So I would love to know. If they have different year flags to buy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, for instance, if they did, I would kill to buy a 1992 flag and have Freddie sign it in the logo. Oh, wow. Oh, here you go. Yes, they do. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that uh, that, that would be awesome for that'd, me. That'd be cool. To yeah, have that, to right. have his flag, his year flag with yeah. his signature. I've got his autograph on a picture of of uh, me, kind of, of of some buddies. But that that would be that would be pretty hang up in the house oh. worthy if I could find that. Frame it to get a get, get a that picture of Freddie glass, yeah, or the, uh, him him signing his flag. But anyway, all right, I got. See, here's the problem with this next month on the show. If well, you if you don't like the Masters. <laughs> Too bad. That's all right. I'm I mean, going to get sidetracked. We were after, talking to a basketball, and I got sidetracked. Well, we can continue that, but after when after this weekend, we're going to be. I mean, we'll talk a lot of thunder, obviously. Yeah. But I think I think people will be in the golf mode. Golf mood. Yeah, it's going to be 75 today. By the way, Storm. another contest ahead, and a new sponsor coming as well to a state tournament yesterday where we talked about the Merritt Oilerettes. The Merritt Oilers, man, that was a back and forth, an absolute battle with number four Hennessy. Through about the oh, first few minutes of the fourth quarter, and then all of a sudden, the lead kind of swelled from three, and then it was seven, then it was nine, and Merritt was never really able to challenge in a nine-point loss, fifty-nine fifty, to the Hennessy Eagles. 
the big dude down low, Torres. Yeah. You know, it. you guys were talking about him and using the descriptions of, like, tank and, you know, monster. And so – then I saw a picture of him, like, like one of the one of the sites I follow, always like takes pictures, sends it out. Yeah, you know, at halftime, here's here's what the score is. Here's kind of who the players on each side scoring the points. Well, after it was over, they sent out that picture of him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a huge dude. Not not he's tall, but he's wide. Not you know, just a big old boy. And it was obvious why there could be trouble uh, down low with him with twenty two and eleven. Yeah, he has great. Uh, footwork, feet work, and finesse with his touch. So he's kind of that complete package that you want out of a center. Mm-hmm. And yeah, size, he had size on him. He was hard to contain because of what I just said. He he would receive it, knew great court awareness, a se- well-seasoned player. And, and you saw people in stands hold up signs with with number uh, what number twelve almost said twenty two he had twenty two points they hold, you know they, they this is something he's been doing for for quite a while twenty two and eleven uh, rebounds for uh, JL, J, JL Torres he was he was the, uh, the the straw that made stirred the drink for them uh, we mentioned the Richardson boys uh, Camden Richardson mm-hmm. finished with thirteen points he's a nice little player uh, for Hennessy but back to Merritt though they graded great effort it it, it started. Uh, Kind of a slow start for him. Hennessy came out. The Merits, once they start hitting those shots, you see a lot. They just start hitting their shots, and they just start to calm down. They see it go through the hoop. And it, actually, Hennessy was having trouble scoring early, too. And I think nerves play a big part of that. And, man, give credit to Merritt, though. And they, they, You could see, why one, they deserve to be in that tournament with the way they've played these playoffs or in this state tournament. And, ten, uh, two, the, the shooting is a big reason why uh, Joshua Ligon with 17 points, hit three three-pointers. Dunlap, Caden Dunlap, such a pretty, like, I know, dude. He high can arcing yeah. shot from, like, four feet off of the three-point line and can get it to go in, finish with 11. 13 points for Caden Smith. Uh, Peffer finished with nine and six rebounds, but he had the tough task of matching up with Torres down low. But Peffer had some great – those rebounds, though, he – he knows his length, right? He he's like he's figured he figured out that part of his game where he doesn't need to, uh, you know, the, the common misconception it's over the back. Well, he not touching anybody when he kind of reaches over and grabs the ball, and he he's figured out he's become a really good or he became a really really good rebounder. And they gave that great effort. I think the backbreaker for me, anyways, was that the they they uh, came out in the third quarter, played really well. Except for the like the final minute, and then Hennessy went like on a what five point run. And what, they hit a buzzer beater because of a turnover. Like they Hennet, or uh, Merritt shot a three too early. Mm-hmm. Probably could have waited about three more seconds before firing it off. Well, allowed Hennessy to get the rebound quickly, get it down the court, lay it up at the buzzer, and then boom, crowd erupts. And it was like, oh, you don't want that. That and I'm a momentum guy, and I thought that just totally turned the momentum around. Merrigan, great effort in that second half or uh, fourth quarter, but uh, it turned into playing catch up mode in the fourth quarter and uh, wind up losing. But, yeah, man, it seems it? like it went from 32 to 28 Merritt to 35 32 Hennessy going into the fourth quarter like that. And then it got to 38 thir- uh, 35 or yeah, yeah. something. You know, Merritt was up three or four, and then all of a sudden, like five, I it think. It switched. Yeah. I'd say I just kind of looking at the scores yeah. when I saw it yeah. and how much it changed, like right, because you see it on Squirtle. I was kind of listening and going back and forth with a bunch of things. And it, yeah, it changed. Like, but we talk about in these in, in the state tournament in the playoffs, thirty two minutes isn't a ton of time. And how often do we see one and a half, two minute stretches in somebody's season? You know, in those those, yeah. those end of quarter, I harp on it on a when I'm on the broadcast, the end of quarter situations that arrow matters, being disciplined in what you're trying to do. Whether or not it's like like that, take a last shot and not let the opponent have the ball, no matter where the arrow is, but especially if it's on their side, your opponent's side, you take a shot too soon, they get the ball, they go score, and then bam, they're right back having the ball to start the next quarter, and all of a sudden they scored five points without you touching it. You know, and in, in yeah. close games, a lot of that can be the difference in everything. Or if you're milking a lead and you're just not wanting to, you're wanting to limit possessions, you know, into third quarter. Being able to to be to be disciplined and composed 
and and run thirty seconds off the clock to take a last shot. You know, a, a lot of times even make or miss doesn't necessarily matter as much as just not letting the other team have a chance to create another opportunity that then gives them some belief heading into the last quarter. So, you know, it just those are those are such huge little bitty parts of the game that that in the regular season, yeah, it is what it is. In the, in those postseason games when you get into the big house, those little things become huge parts of the game right. and and we see it well, all I mean, those, the time. Those little things. Um I mentioned it in the Merritt Girls game, the the difference part of the difference was the free throws. Same thing in this game. Hennessy went to the free throw line uh, or shot 12 free throws, made 10 of them, mm-hmm. compared to uh, Merritt's 8 of 15. And what's what's kind of um, the you know frustrating, I guess, if you're a Merritt fan, is they shot better from the field than Hennessy. They shot the three better from the field, percentagely, than Hennessy. But it was the free throws of Hennessy. They made 10 of 12. It was a nine-point game. You do the math. Yeah. Uh, you know, you – but part of that, at the end of the game, they start mm-hmm. to start sure. fouling and yeah, they put right. them on the free throw line. But, but it even accentuates it more because they outscored Merritt by two with taking three less free throws. And probably in the run of the game, they, they had tied them, taking five or six or seven less free throws right. before the fouling had to start. So, yeah, that's uh, there's no doubt that that, that matters, too. Yeah. All right, tell me about Dale. Oh, man. Uh, tell me about Dale. So, I, everyone showed up. Here's my say, question. Here, well, here's a question I yeah. have. Yeah. Before you start – Everybody knows about Forsyth. Sure. That's why everyone's there. People don't realize how good the rest of that team is. So my question is this. Could they win the state tournament if Dayton Forsyth wasn't even on the team? Yes. I thought so, too. Yes. Uh, On the way home, I've been driving a lot, so I I, I find podcasts. I listen to a lot of our our mothership station podcasts. I was listening to Mark's interview with Coach Edmondson, uh, head coach of, of Dale. and he was, he, So this was after the fact, after the game. He was talking to him yesterday afternoon before their game. So he was kind of saying what I thought I saw and saying about these guys you could tell have – and that's a really – and I've said this before. I said it last week during a small school a basketball tournament was you could tell the teams have been playing with each other since they were in diapers. These boys are it. They, I mean, they're neighbors. They, they grew up together – play AAU together he's coached them from from then till now so and they they all know their roles on the team they're all very well distributors of the basketball great shooters absolutely they can win state without Forsyth it's nice to have them but they I it's it's weird to say they didn't need them they're just a really well constructed team that program is a machine he said they have about a hundred kids total in their basketball program right now, boys mm-hmm. from junior high to high school, a hundred. Can you, in two way? Can you imagine that? Do they even have a gym big enough to have practice? That's nuts. That is insane. But he is a he's the real deal. I had my buddies text me because they knew I was there. Like, is he for real? And I and he has such a quick first step, so such explosiveness. But it's not just about him getting to the rim. He can shoot it he he uh what he hit he didn't want the one three he only took four threes he didn't need i mean they won at 87 to 50 so they set him down pretty early uh but he finished with 23 points but his stroke was so nice uh getting to the free throw line everything about his game but the way he sets up to receive the basketball no matter where he's at in the court it's you can tell this kid has lived in the gym i mean just so fluid so calm plays with such grace like I said, quick first step, explosive. He's real fun to watch, and I can't wait to see how this all translate uh, to the next level uh, in Norman for Coach Mosier, who was there, by the way. That was kind of cool. I was too, I was too chicken, you know what, to go down and say <laughs> hi, even though I had my press pass, I probably could have. I didn't want to interrupt him, but no, nah, I was. Uh, and I credit him too. He stayed the entire game. You'd think once Forsyth sat down, you knew mm-hmm. his day was done. He stayed the entire game. But they are the real deal. This is. Uh, one of the best teams I've seen with my own eyes in person, and I mean that. Yeah, no, that, that's just because it's a two A school doesn't mean that it's not one of the better ones we've ever seen in boys basketball well, they in the went state out, of Oklahoma. They went out and they found competition this year. Mm-hmm. They did last year. Won they the did, tournament champions exactly. last year. Exactly. They uh, I think, and, and I heard in this interview 
Uh, they played Hoover, Alabama. Did they beat them or lose to them? I can't remember. Over in that tournament. I think that's tournament. the team that might have beat them. Well, Hoover, Alabama just finished up wrapping up the, the Alabama state, state title. State title. Yeah. So you can see kind of, kind of the quality of teams they've been playing. And he and Edmondson mentioned during Mark's interview was, yeah, we wanted to play Edmond, what, North or one of the Edmond schools that's really North. good right now. So we just didn't have the opportunity. And, mm-hmm. But you know they're looking for that, and they understand we're one of the better teams, not just in the state, but in the country. You don't get better by just playing teams in your region. Let's go find that competition. They went and found it this year. It's made them better. But as a team, they're really good. Um, and he has a brother, too, who he says, Edmondson said, that he will get some looks when he gets over. He doesn't even start on this team. Well, that's what uh, Jared just texted us, that – uh, Mark said they might be there watching the brother too. He being isn't Mosher. that how it works though? Sometimes it's the younger of the sibling that well, or just turns out having be... him having having him on that team yeah. gets everybody seen. Oh, there's oh, no yeah. telling. There's no telling how many of those guys might end up getting to play college basketball on whatever level because there's people there watching Forsyth. There is a kid, and I forgive me for not remembering his name. Is it the redheaded kid? How good is that kid? Just, <laughs> he doesn't look like he should be that good. Short, kind of skinny, but just plays with such poise. And, and I was impressed with him. He stood out to me. Yeah, Forsyth does a real deal. And I was mentioning the crowd. I kind of mentioned it was like, well, it's like, first off, they took Warner's crowd completely out of the game early. It's like they knew this was coming. Two, I didn't think the crowd was as big. Now, it was Wednesday night, 7.30 middle mm-hmm. of the week but part of me was like no they're just waiting for saturday well <laughs> it's and it's like, still it's inevitable the they're thing gonna... about it is it's still on these on these early week uh, early week games it's just the two way you know we, we, we kind of compare it to last saturday well last saturday was everybody yeah you know a and b and we're all there i have a feeling saturday night that place is going to be jam-packed. Yeah, well, Friday even, too, because you're mm-hmm. going to be joined in there with 4A, I believe. Let's say I know that Saturday well, night. 2A is the first session. I to 2A boys are the last two games tomorrow. Okay. I looked that up. 7.30 and 9 on the boys' side. And then, of course, you've got 4A during the, boy, 7.30 and 9? 7.30 and so 9. So 4A for, boys' semifinals are 4.30 30, and 6. So there you go. So you're going to get oh my gosh. your Douglas fans in there. More than likely, you're going to get your Weatherford fans in there. More than likely, and a Darko fans. And they're going to hang out and watch that. Okay, let's 100%. go to 4A right quick. Yeah. It starts today. 4A girls, 4A boys. And um, on the boys' side... Three Western Conference teams, Western Conference being, you know, what what Elk City and Clinton, Weatherford, they all play in the same conference there. Weatherford plays still well at 4.30. Uh, Darko and McLean at 6. Blanchard and Douglas at 7.30. I mention this because there's a chance we get Weatherford and Darko tomorrow. <laughs> I, know, I know where you're going. <laughs> Is there a chance in the state semifinals oh. – that Shumpert Shumperts. Oh, there's always a chance. If he's the head coach, there's a chance. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope I, I hope there is. And I hope Mark's not on the call on that one. He poor, will be. Poor Mark. Yeah, it'll be the it'll be the night game. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'll be there. So I mean that's Oh boy. I mean that made national news. Oh yeah. With that four to two score. Let's just look at the other results outside of that 4-2 to two between these two teams over the last couple of years. This year, they played before Christmas. Weatherford beat Anadarko 66-46. to 46. Okay? I believe they played again last year after the 4-2. to two. I think it was in the playoffs. Nope, it was right. There's 4-2. to two. Man, I thought they might have played in. I thought they played in the playoffs. They didn't. They did not. God, I thought they did. Anyway, so 4-2 to two versus 66-46. One of those is clearly not like the other. Is there a chance? <laughs> Whatever it takes to win. And watch them win the opening tip, go and lay it up, make a stop. And then just stop playing. And then just stop playing. For the whole quarter. Then if you make a shot at the end of the quarter, you're up four nothing, maybe five nothing, let's say. 
Weatherford gets the ball first, and then you run the entire I mean, it's quarter. It's going to feel like third grade Clinton League if you're Maybe. up by four, <laughs> four to nothing. You think you've you got this thing won? For the viewing pleasure of the folks in the big house tomorrow, yeah. everybody's going to be rooting for Tulsa McLean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, man. And can you hear, I mean, think about the crying and the whining for a shot clock by every, you know what I'm saying? I mean, immediately. Oh, yeah. The, that, as much as we thought there was an uproar last year in the regular season game when that happened, Think about if it happens in the state semifinals. Oh, my gosh. Merritt about benefited from a shot clock yesterday. Did you see that in the boys' game? Mm-mm. I forget what end of what quarter, close to end of a quarter. Merritt had a breakaway. I forget. It. I, I'm, I'm looking it up right now. And the kid just kind of threw up the wild shot to try to get it to go in the bucket. It went straight up, hit the shot clock, and <laughs> came, went through the hoop. Well, obviously, it didn't count. <laughs> Everyone, it was screaming and laughing, and, and it was a wild shot. Uh, the, the text line's funny about the weather for Anadarko possibilities. Yeah. I may burn that thing down. <laughs> oh. Speaking of, did you see what happened in New Jersey? What a robbery, man. Oh. Uh, man, was Massaquan, the, how do you say that? Massaquan? Did the Sopranos have money on that game? Manassaquan. In, in Jersey there? Camden, New Jersey. If you're Camden's coach, do you even consider going, you know what, we didn't win that game, we're not going. Man, we're just almost conference championship tournament week for the big, for the bigger schools next week, and of course selection Sunday, a week from Sunday. And you know what that means, Jared? The real season begins. That means the Western Oklahoma Realty yeah. Bracket ah. Challenge is back. I have it set up on the ESPN site. Look at you go. I have a link on our Skinny on Sports Facebook already. I mean, obviously, you can't pick anything yet because the bracket hasn't been drawn up, but you can absolutely get your entry ready to go, as I have. Tyler Harrison, Robbie Allen, and all the gang at Western Oklahoma Realty. People before property is their motto. They sponsor the bracket challenge, sponsor the you know college pick them during the football season. Now, uh, we've got some, uh, man, we got some exciting news coming on Monday, Jared. We gotta wait till Monday. We gotta wait till Monday. It's Thursday. We gotta wait till Monday, but we got some exciting news for the show. Somebody wow. a new sponsor coming aboard. Oh, I love that. At the perfect time for the NCAA tournament and the summer sports schedule. We'll tell you about that all on Monday. But uh yeah, we're we're ready to rock and roll. I've got it set up, ready to go. So you can get your get your entry in to the group. Skinny on Sports. Here's how it goes. It says Skinny on Sports dash Western Oklahoma Realty is the group you're looking for on the ESPN side, or just click the link that I've put in that Facebook post on the Skinny on Sports. I shared it with mine. I shared it with uh, Paragon TV. So there's lots of different ways you can find that. <clears throat> Listen, Jared, I'm not trying to get skinny. I am trying to make sure I don't die walking up the hill at you know, nine or 18 at Augusta national. I've been walking last two, last two nights. So, Oh, I see. The last line. Yeah. Of- last two nights we've, uh, we're looking at trying to get 12 miles in per week, 12 miles, 12 a week. miles a week, which we well, got vicious. And for me, but 3.2, two nights ago, we went two points, 2.4 last night. But, uh, and I think probably, I'm feeling pretty good. I feel way better than I did yesterday. Well, good. So maybe uh, we can up that just to you know, because the walking around the, the Augusta National is going to be tough. So are you walking up and down hills? Just around the neighborhood. There's plenty of hills. Okay. Here and there. I used. Have to, you considered walking a round of golf? No, but I if I would just quit being so lazy in the mornings, what I used to do was get up and go walk the golf course. Yeah. You know, there's nobody out there at six in the morning. What? What? Just what, walk the cart path. What better scenic place to? Yeah, I've taken a bunch of cool pictures too, with the sun coming up. Oh and, yeah, the dew on the on the yes, greens. Yeah, yes. but uh, it's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I'd much rather be in my golf cart playing golf than walking around the golf course. But hey, it is what it is. 
Got to uh, got to get ready. Well, do you to have roll. a cart you can pull, or do you have a or push? I guess with your clubs. Do you have a? I have a golf thing? cart I can ride in. No, I mean the, the walk. I don't know. If I mean, I'm going to play take golf, take your walk in the morning. Just if I'm going to play your clubs, eh, I don't want to do that. If I'm going to play golf, I'm going to be walking. Or I'm not going to be walking. Be I'm going to be riding. All right, Jared. Bracketology. Going into this week, had Oklahoma a nine seed on Lenardi's. I looked at Jerry Palm on CBS Sports. He had him a nine. I'm sorry. Lenardi had him 10. Jerry Palm had him nine. Coincidentally, both of those guys, even though they had them different seeds, had them playing Dayton. You know, 10 mm-hmm. 7 and 9 8. Anyway, and then uh, SI.com had him a 10 playing Boise State as a seven. Uh, I think maybe the SI.com, they were one of the last four buys, but that was before the win, as ugly as it might have been on Tuesday night, over Cincinnati. Now Oklahoma with 20 and 10. First time they've won 20 games since the Buddy Heald Final Four season. They're guaranteed at worst an 8 and 10 record in the Big 12 Conference. Do you think that win on thir- on Tuesday night absolutely solidifies Oklahoma in the NCAA tournament? Well, everything I'm, I've heard, it sounds like it did. It, it sounds like that's the one that they almost had to win because winning at Austin seems like it's going to be tough. But I, it sounds like that no matter what they're in, if they go and lose in Austin and even lose their first-round Big 12 tournament game, that's what um, – I'm just relaying what I've heard. Right. <laughs> I've been driving a lot, so listen to a lot of sports talk radio. But I think it does, honestly. I thought – because th- I think that was the uh, – the uh, talk going into that game and so when that went zeros in overtime i thought that's it They're, they should be in yeah from I think- everything i've i'm hearing that it's enough to get them in now it's just a question of what seed and they could probably improve their seeding if they can get hot here in the big 12 tournament they got to get healthier though they, they got to get uh Hughley back which i've heard he's dressed out just not playing and um McCollum didn't even play. No, he had a shoulder. Suarez is battling it, through. You can tell it. Yes, yeah, he just he's got spurts of really good, but then he's got spurts of kind of right a little bit rough. You know, with that ankle not being all the way healthy. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm in total agreement. I, I think they're there. I, I think that now it's just I don't know how many games and who they. The thing is, not only I mean, obviously a win in Austin would put you even nine to nine. So if you look at those those projections, you go two and zero this week, even though it's it's against the unranked teams. You end up you end up a five hundred team, twenty one wins in the regular season in the Big Twelve. Does that get you to say move you up one line in each of those projections? So let's just say you know best case scenario for Oklahoma going into the Big Twelve tournament, Jerry Palm is right, and so these two wins move them from a nine to an eight. Well, how many then in, in KC do you need to win one? Go one and one and lose to one of the better. I think you'd have to play Houston in the in the in the second round uh, with being like that eight nine game against. It looks like they may play Texas twice in a row with the way the standings are. So if you could even beat Texas twice, then lose to Houston, would that be enough to maybe push you to a seven? Because you don't want to be eight or nine. Because of not only that matchup, but then the second round matchup. I, I, for me, honestly, I'd rather be a ten than an eight, just because of what you know, yeah. the first round game is going to be really similar to an eight and nine, sure. seven and ten. That's going to be really similar. But then the second round game is a more winnable. Is a more winnable, uh, you know, in a lot of years. This year may not be quite as big a gap because there's not maybe that. You know, it, yeah. it, it seems like you, you probably. I don't know if you want to say you don't want to play Purdue, but you don't want to play Purdue. You know their history in the tournament isn't good, but that team has been awesome this year. Obviously, Houston, the Sooners were right with them. I think that was an anomaly playing that good of offense, knocking in threes, and then UConn. You probably want to avoid any of those, so you can do that being on that seven ten, and then <clears throat> you know you get to you get a, what two seeds will be Carolina. Maybe you played them pretty well in the first. I mean that's not an unwinnable game. With what we saw when they when the two teams played, you know Marquette is a possibility. Maybe a Duke, maybe an Arizona. I mean, <clears throat> Alabama, Tennessee. You know, one of those types of teams would be kind of what's there. I think you'd much rather that than Houston, obviously. Or yeah. and I don't think Houston would be the team. So probably either Purdue or UConn. 
I think you got a way better chance of beating one of those others as a ten than you would as you know as eight or nine. Well, this year you never know. It just seems like yeah. there's so much parity because of the landscape of college basketball. You know, the outside of maybe a couple teams like you mentioned, like a Purdue. You mentioned the 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 uh, history that they have in the tournament, but they still have Ed, uh, Eddie Edie back, and I think they'll be a little bit more focused. And then, of course, UConn. But it is a year it feels like that seeding be damned. I, mean, I think you can make it's, a case for almost anybody to, to beat anybody. I think it is purely matchups. Yes. Yeah. N- not necessarily. I mean, there. I, I think there's a lot of teams around the country, even up higher in the pecking order, that would trade – say a, a four seed for a six seed depending on what that road is you know and, and what and who is in the way who or who the matchups are because it, it seems like now there are some i don't even think i'm not going to say elite i don't think there's an elite team out there i just don't i, I don't no. think even that uconn team of last year i don't think there's anybody that good so you've got some really really good teams and then you've got a big old giant bucket of the rest you know, I yeah. mean, I, yeah. this is one of the craziest years where, and maybe it was that way last year with what we ended up seeing, but it feels like there's not a hill of beans difference, at least in the Big 12, between teams that are going to be three seeds and teams that are going to be nine and ten seeds. It doesn't feel like there's that, you know, a lot of times you go, oh, gosh, don't want to play Kansas. Oh, yeah? Who the hell's scared about playing Kansas? <laughs> LSU. You know, I mean, I mean <laughs> it's, it's just the truth. <laughs> There's, there's not a, but see Kansas that matchup. It, it's all about the matchups with the teams. Like if I'm Oklahoma, the the two teams that I don't want to see in a bracket would be Houston and would be Baylor, and probably Iowa State because of the, as how ugly that game is. Although it's not in Hilton, but it, I mean I just don't see a, Houston and Baylor to me are losses and move on. Whereas somebody else you might have a better chance up in you know, a little bit higher in the pecking order. Mm. How do you think the Big Twelve? How do you think the Big Twelve is going to do? I, I think nationally, everyone thinks it's the best conference. Everyone t- thinks it's the toughest conference. Is that going to show in the big in the in the big dance with the teams getting away from each other? And then you see like like Oklahoma is a perfect example of this to me. You look in the non conference. Yeah, they didn't beat a, a world beater, but they beat some good teams, some decent teams, some good name teams. Outside the conference, then you look up and you're almost losing to Cincinnati, one of the bottom feeders in the Big 12. So getting away from each other, do you think that really shows the strength of the Big 12? Or are these close games from, say, the third best team in the league clear to the bottom a result of maybe the strength isn't really there at the top of the league like we've seen it in the past? I think that to answer the question, I think they'll do, it It really is – I hate to go here, but it's really contingent on the officiating crew. I said how, that yesterday. On how it's going to be called. Because you have these Big 12 officials, now they understand this is going to be a a fight. There, there's going to be a lot of a lot of bruises handed out. We have to call it as such to, you know, we have to kind of uh, adjust. So, that's, that. you know, you're not going to get a Big 12 crew, but I think, you you know, you say you get a, I don't know, an ACC crew. And, you know, say it's a Big 12 team versus a, a team from the WAC. And, and some would say, well, that probably favors the Big 12 team. But if it's if they keep calling fouls and fouls and fouls, all of a sudden the Big 12 team that likes to get physical is suddenly have to change up and adjust, and all of a sudden that team from the WAC, say St. Mary's or Gonzaga, is filling it up. And so it, it again, that's where I go is is how mm-hmm. are the officials going to call? So you kind of get a feeling for that about the first five minutes of the game, like okay, they're going to start blowing the whistle for this or that or whatever, or they're going to let them play. And that that's how and, and yeah, we call it the best conference in the country because of, of quality from top to bottom. But that's a great question of how is it fair? How does it match up with those other teams and how are they allowed to match up with those other teams? Yeah. I think when you look at the sec, it's way more fun to watch an sec game than it yeah, is the big 12. It. Yeah. Yeah. But in the, in a tournament setting, you get, you know, K- Kentucky and Kansas, if Kansas can rough them up a little bit, does that take some of the skill away? It, it almost, it's not all the way the same to this, but it almost reminds me of when we talk about Class A boys. The football teams 
yep. versus the basketball teams, yep. right? And yep. and if it's allowed to football team strength to matter, then all of a sudden it's a totally different game. If it's more of a game of skill and basketball acumen, a lot of times those basketball teams right. win the game. Seen it a lot. Yeah, seen it a and lot. And so that that's yep. kind of how I would equate it, at least locally. Big 12 versus SEC. It's a good example. Yeah. If they start to match up with each other in the tournament, but I, you know, I, I think it's going to be very, very interesting. Yes. To see how the Big 12 does. Uh, update from the Big House. How many, well, quick. How many you think get in? Nine? nine. Nine. Yeah, I think nine. Texas was sort of on the bubble, but man, they the good. the last week or so they got a couple of pretty big wins out in Lubbock. I think was a huge win for them. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, they fell to Baylor. That's a game they they led a bunch of that time. Look does that it, matter? I mean, it, it just. Does a committee go, man, they played them really well. Like, oh, you played Houston really I don't, well. I think maybe if you start splitting hairs between two teams, maybe it does, but I doubt it. I think it's all about winning games or losing games. Um, Dylan DeSue out probably with the leg injury, the big guy for Texas. Could that help OU? Because I know he he was a huge part of Texas winning in Norman that last yeah, time. They couldn't, they couldn't do anything with yeah. that guy. And so we'll see what his status is for Saturday and, of course, for the Horns moving forward. Um in their season as well. Uh, update from the big house. Yeah. To nobody's surprise, Bethany is hammering Tuttle. It's forty to twenty going into the fourth quarter. Oh, I, get, I mean, that's not bad, Tuttle. <laughs> yeah, it's not fourth terrible. Fourth quarter, twenty points, not, not bad. Not terrible. Not terrible by you. Uh, there was actually four girls that have scored a thousand points on the floor in that game. Three from Bethany, one from Tuttle. Wow. Um now, remind me of the question we had about Dale and Bethany, who would win by the largest margin. Yes. Like in the entire tournament, in the entire or on tournament, Saturday? in the entire tournament. Well, right now, Dell is Dell is seventeen up. Yeah, I'm gonna need, I need I'm gonna need Coach Eric Saylor to pour it on Tuttle like he poured it on the Elkettes. Okay, <laughs> come on, bro. And I don't think didn't have a problem putting a hundred on us. Where is it at right now? And sorry, Hennessy, but you're, nice run. Listen, <laughs> but Dell's coming. You're, as, uh. as that game was going playing out last night, I was texting with one of my buddies, and I was like, you know. I wonder if those kids on the floor are thinking, hey, this is cool. Now we get to get beat by 40 tomorrow. You know, it's it's just the the reality. Or do they think they can win? You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way.